Hey, I'm Colton from Ankeny Van Builds, and today we're going to be building all of our lower cabinets for the van, so it should be a very exciting video. Uh, if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And also, I realized lately that I've gained quite a bit of subscribers, so I want to say thank you to all you guys who are supporting my channel, and let's just go ahead and show you how to build these cabinets. So really quickly before we start this video, I do want to ask you guys a question. I posted on my Instagram this logo right here for Ankeny Van Builds, the official logo, and I got a ton of responses for it. And I'm thinking about making some t-shirts and hoodies and stickers, but if that's something you guys would be interested in, uh, please let me know in the comments below if you would like to buy some t-shirts. They will kind of help determine how many of these I order. So yeah, if you guys want to support this channel, help me out. Uh, let me know if these t-shirts are something you would want and other than that, that's all I had to say. Let's get back to the video. So one thing I did do off camera is I built these benches. I didn't film any of it and I apologize for that, but I want to show you what I did here. I left one side open on this side so that right here you can have surfboards or snowboards or anything that's about seven foot eight long. You can store underneath this bench and underneath the bed. I also put some holes here so you can lift up and have extra storage underneath both of these bed seats and I made this awesome little backrest so that it is very comfortable. Uh, I really only used three quarter inch plywood for the structure of it, half inch plywood for the seat in the back, and then an eighth inch or actually quarter inch plywood for the faces of it. So over here I have where the mini fridge is going to go. I'm actually going to build on the cabinet a platform so that it's up higher so you're not bending down or having to get down on a knee to open up the fridge. Uh, the link to this fridge will be in the description below. But basically the mini fridge will be up on a platform and below that will be a drawer for pots and pans and things like that. And next to it will be a three drawer setup. And then over here on this side, I have the Wabasto heater, but I'm gonna build a step for it so you're not sitting on it or stepping on it or kicking it. So the feet will go here and I'll have the countertop come out a little bit further. That way this swivel seat acts as a desk or a place to eat your food and it'll be nice and comfortable. So this whole area will be open for your legs. And all in all, I think this cabinet over here is gonna be super functional, uh, really good, really cool looking and uh, very practical. So that's gonna be the plan for this one here. And then on this side, I'm gonna have just basically a square with a sink in the middle and then one of those flip up countertops that comes up on this side for extra counter space. And then on the back side, I'll have it open up from the back so you can take these water jugs in and out. Both of these are seven gallon water jugs. One will be clean water, one will be the gray water tank. So one thing I always do when I'm building cabinets or something like this where there's a lot of cuts, a lot of different measurements and it all has to be very precise is it all starts out with a really rudimentary drawing of what I want with the measurements of length, width, depth. And then from there, I start making the more precise measurements, taking into account what thickness of plywood I'm using, what type of things I want on it as far as like drawer slides, how I want to make the face frame. But basically I start out with a simple drawing and then I start a cut list. I need three boards that are this dimension, five that are this dimension, just to get myself started and then I go from there. And I hope that helps you guys out if that made any sense. So the first couple cuts I plan on making will be the three vertical pieces that'll get the height of it and the depth of it just right. And then I'll start cutting little strips at about two and a half inches wide to connect them together to start piecing that frame and start building that shape for it. So I'm gonna do a 35 inch by 24 inch sheet of plywood three times. That along with the countertop I'm gonna put on will make it right at the 36 to 36 and a half inch uh, height. So I just used three sheets of uh, the three quarter inch plywood. Uh, I buy the two foot by four foot sheets. So I just cut the length of it off that 12 or so inches to get to the 36, sorry, the 35. And then now I'm just 
cutting out where the toe kick is gonna go on the front of these cabinets. Okay, so I have the three pieces cut with the toe kicks in place. Now I'm gonna start building the stand for where the mini fridge is gonna go. just right so now the countertop will go on top of that and it'll or hide the bottom of those subway tiles and I left this gap open here so the countertop will come across acting like a desk and then we'll have another step that comes out covering the heater all in all I think it's looking pretty good so far pretty stoked with how it turned out uh, I'm gonna call it a day here tomorrow I'll probably start on the sink cabinet getting the framework of that and uh, yeah, just like that, day one is done. Okay, so day two of this lower cabinet building video. Uh, today, let's get started on this sink cabinet. And remember I said, it's gonna have a door that's gonna fold down on the back side of it so you can get to the water jugs and a cabinet door that opens sideways on the front side of it with the same shaker style cabinet doors that we have up here. And one thing I do wanna mention before we get started is I went with a 24 inch uh, cabinet on this side and that is so I would have room for the ventilation of the mini fridge and also uh, deeper uh, countertops. However, I would not want to recommend that on this side because 24 inches would get us a very narrow hallway here and I don't want it to feel cramped. So I'm gonna go with probably 20 inches, maybe 22 at most for this cabinet here. Got to do when putting uh, the, this floor and I cut out the piece for the floor and I just use uh, quarter inch plywood but I reinforced the middle part of it with another strip and I made them all the size of this toe kick here because there's gonna be a ton of weight uh, from the water jugs here so I made sure to reinforce it because quarter inch would have just folded and snapped so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and then finish up with this face frame but it's coming together pretty nicely so there it is, dry fit, this is where it's gonna go. And the water jugs fit in here perfectly. So from the outside, you can easily take in and out these water jugs, no problem. And there's enough room in this doorway left where you can just walk on in. It's not in the way, and this hallway also has enough room. So all in all, I think it's a really good fit. This right here is the sink that I'm gonna put in. It's this awesome, black, if you can kind of see the specs, it's like this granite sparkle look, almost exactly like the outside of the van. You can tell right here, see that? It's almost the exact same 
color and material as the outside of the van, so I think it's gonna tie in perfectly. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it so far. And I think tomorrow I'll get started on these drawer boxes and this cabinet face. Good morning, back at it. Today we're gonna make the cabinet doors for the sink and hopefully get started on these drawer boxes for the other side. But when I was looking at this, this morning I realized I didn't take into account this curved piece over here. Let me show you. So I didn't take into account this piece right here. So I was gonna have the door from right here fold down, but now this is in the way. So I'm gonna have to make another strip comes down this way just a little bit further and hopefully that doesn't interfere with getting these water jugs out. Actually, now that I look at it, uh, I changed my mind. I'm just gonna pull this off and make this just a couple inches uh, longer. That way it accounts for this and it will still look really nice. Okay, that's much better. So now I have room to put this door here so that it can fold down. And when I switch the water jugs, I can easily take both of, both of them in and out, no problem. And we're back on track. So I've talked about this in one of my previous videos about the uh, upper cabinets and I'm going to show you how to make uh, shaker cabinet doors but I'm going to be a little bit more detailed on this one. Uh, last time my camera battery died and I just kind of finished it off camera. So this one I'm going to show you. I'm going to start out by ripping three quarter inch plywood at two and a half inches wide and just a general woodworking tip. I want to, I want to show you this real quick. So when you're using a table saw. The way I get my measurements as accurate as possible. I'm going to start out by putting, by ripping the two and a half inches on this side of the table saw. So I get my tape measure. I want it right at two and a half. So what I'll do is I'll slide the table saw until this tooth just on the left side of that two and a half inch mark on the tape measure. So now I'll keep the fence there as I rip all of my strips. That way I know every single one of them is exactly two and a half inches and exactly the same width as the rest of the framework. screws this is how it's gonna look but before we attach it we have to cut out the groove that goes right in the middle so that our quarter inch plywood can fit uh, in the middle of all this and I'll show you how I do that so the first thing you're gonna want to do is to lower the blade to the height that you want it so I want it at a half inch so I put a half inch piece of plywood there so right about there the blade is flush with this half inch plywood so now my blade is half an inch off the ground and then the next part you want to do is find the midpoint of this plywood because we know that the blade is an eighth of an inch and our plywood is a quarter of an inch. So if we can get it right on either side of that blade, we can run the plywood through one side, rotate it through the other, and then that will be in a quarter of an inch. So after doing that, it creates one of these notches here in the three quarter inch. And then when I get my quarter inch plywood, this will be able just to slide right into it and that's what makes that shaker cabinet look. So smooth. Okay, so all I did here is I just put a sheet of plywood that covers up the gap that I already had here, put simple hinges below it, and now we have this awesome outdoor table and also access to our water jugs and our plumbing for the sink. So I'm pretty happy with this design. I think it looks really cool. I just have to figure out a way 
to hold it up and then maybe some strings uh, or cables to hold it at this 90 degree angle and I might do like a gate latch or something. Okay, so what I did is I attached these face frames on so this will be where my three drawers will go. And the reason I did inch and a half for the face frame is because the side pieces here are three quarter. So that way now I can get a three quarter inch board. I put it here, it's nice and flush. And this is what the drawer slides will go on to. So it's nice and flush and there won't be anything catching. So now once I get the drawer slides, I can just figure out, attach the drawer slides to that and then the boxes will go right in between those. So for the sake of time, I noticed this video is getting kind of long. I think I'm going to end this video here and in my next video, I'll make this like a part two. In my next video, I'll explain how I make all the drawer boxes, the drawer faces, the hardware, the painting, all of that. So look for that video next week. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I'll see you guys next week. See ya.